Welcome to the Patriots Archive. Character Profile Subject Peter Stillman Peter Stillman was a bomb disposal expert who played a short-lived yet important role during the Big Shell incident on April 29, 2009 and served as an important subject in the S3 plan experiment. He was born on November 16th, but his exact year of birth is unknown. However, he was known to be in his late 50s during the Big Shell incident, which implies he was between 57 and 59 years old on April 29, 2009. Thus, it can be presumed that Peter Stillman's exact date of birth was November 16th, 1949, 1950, or 1951. Little else is known about his past, but he eventually grew up to become a foremost expert in bomb disposal, reaching legendary status. So valued was his expertise in the field that his name came to be found in almost every explosives disposal textbook. Throughout his career, he worked closely with the NYPD bomb squad as a consultant and eventually became a lecturer and instructor at the Naval School of Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or Napscoliad, in Indian Head, Maryland, where he met Fatman, his greatest student. Stillman, having no children of his own, eventually came to find a son in Fatman and taught him everything he knew. However, having taught him only skills and no values, this would prove to be a fatal mistake and eventually lead to Stillman's own demise. His career in bomb disposal would come to an abrupt end in 2004. Sometime that year, Peter Stillman was called to defuse a terrorist bomb in a famous church. During the disposal, despite his reputation and experience, he panicked and was unable to disarm the bomb. He safely fled the church before the bomb detonated, but others weren't so fortunate. Many people died during the incident, including children who had been playing nearby, but Stillman had made it out unscathed. Unable to face the truth and guilt of what he had let happen, all Stillman could think about was hiding from the crime and shielding himself from public outcry. Wanting people to pity him and his weakness, he faked losing a leg to the incident, pretended having it replaced with a prosthetic, and began to use a cane to walk to further sell the facade. In truth, both of Stillman's legs were in perfect condition. Following this tragic incident, Peter Stillman retired. Five years later, on April 29, 2009, during the Big Shell incident, Peter Stillman was brought out of retirement after a terrorist group known as the Sons of Liberty seized control of the Big Shell. One of the terrorist group's members was none other than Peter Stillman's former pupil, Fatman, who had planted a series of bombs all throughout the facility, endangering its structural integrity. In response to the Sons of Liberty, the Navy deployed two SEAL Team 10 units, Alpha Team was responsible for rescuing President James Johnson from Big Shell, who was kidnapped during the Sons of Liberty takeover, while Bravo Team was in charge of disposing of Fat Man's C4 bombs. Stillman was deployed alongside Bravo Team to aid them with their task and supervise the process. Alpha Team, entrusted with the President's rescue, eventually landed on Strut B of the Big Shell facility, but were quickly taken out by one of Sons of Liberty's former Death Cell members, Van. Then, Bravo Team, responsible for disposing of Fat Man's bombs, while on their way to Strut C, were confronted by another former Death Cell member, Fortune, on the bridge connecting Struts B and C, and they too were quickly overwhelmed. During Bravo Team's encounter against Fortune, Peter Stillman had managed to take refuge in Strut C, where he was to stand by as part of the mission plan. While on standby, he was discovered by S3 plan test subject Raiden, an alleged sole survivor and Lieutenant Junior Grade of SEAL Team 10's Alpha Team, Iroquois Pliskin, the latter of who was in reality Solid Snake in disguise. Pliskin immediately recognized Peter Stillman due to his reputation, calling him the bomb disposal guy. Then, when Pliskin inquired about his retirement, Stillman shared how he was brought out of retirement to supervise Bravo Team's bomb disposal, as one of the terrorists was a former pupil of his, Fat Man, who had built his first atomic bomb at the young age of 10. Then, when asked if there were any other survivors among Bravo Team, Stillman mentioned that an engineer also accompanied the unit, whose role was to help bypass security measures in the facility. The topic eventually shifted to finding a way to disarm Fat Man's bombs, 
Stillman offered the temporary solution of freezing the bombs with a coolant spray to buy time rather than disarming them outright. As for finding the bombs, Stillman provided bomb detection sensors known as ion mobility spectrometers, which would not only detect ionized leaks prevalent in C4 bombs, but also Fat Man's signature cologne that he leaves on every bomb he builds. When asked by Pliskin if the signature was something that Fat Man had learned from Stillman, Stillman shared that this was Fat Man's own quirk, describing him as the kind of person who wouldn't work by any rules except his own, following them like a religion. He also shared how having no son of his own, he had seen a son in Fat Man back then, teaching him everything he knew. After providing more details on his history with Fat Man, Stillman proceeded by teaching Raiden and Pliskin how to use the bomb sensors. He then explained Big Shell's structure and relayed his predictions on where Fat Man would place C4 bombs to take down the facility. Stillman concluded that Fat Man would have placed at least one bomb in each of Big Shell's 12 struts. When Pliskin asked if he was sure, Stillman confirmed with confidence as he had taught Fat Man all of his techniques claiming that Fat Man's ideas were based on his theory. With coolant sprays and bomb sensors at the ready, it was decided that Raiden would take care of the bombs in Shell 1, and that Pliskin would take care of the bombs in Shell 2. To allow them access to more areas of the facility, Stillman provided them with necessary security cards. With all preparations made, Raiden and Pliskin set out to disarm the bombs. Stillman attempted to join them, but Pliskin asked him to remain hidden in Strut C, as his alleged prosthetic leg would slow everyone down. Raiden then suggested that Stillman provide support over the radio. Stillman finally yielded, and they got to work. Pliskin left first, and before Raiden could leave, Stillman warned him that Pliskin wasn't a SEAL or a Navy man, pointing out discrepancies in Pliskin's language and behavior compared to those of a lieutenant of a SEAL unit. However, Stillman did not believe Pliskin to be a terrorist and was more suspicious of Raiden, who hadn't revealed the nature of his presence in Big Shell. After setting his suspicions aside, Stillman hid and locked himself in Strutzi's pantry, and Raiden set out to work. The mission progressed smoothly, with both Pliskin and Raiden successfully finding and disarming bombs scattered throughout Shells 1 and 2, reporting the bomb's locations to Stillman along the way. However, as more bombs were disarmed, Stillman began to suspect that something was amiss, as none of the bomb locations had been effective demolition points to destroy the facility. He also noticed that the quantity of explosives was insufficient. Knowing that Fat Man would never make such amateurish mistakes, Stillman suspected that there was something amiss and proceeded to call Pliskin, asking him to check out the bottom of Big Shell's strut H. Pliskin did as asked and reported his findings to both Stillman and Raiden. Residing at the bottom of Strut H was a vast amount of C4 packed together, enough to inflict serious structural damage to Big Shell according to Stillman. To make matters worse, Pliskin reported that the C4 bombs were sensor-proof, sealed tight to prevent vapor leaks, and that Fat Man's signature cologne was nowhere to be found. With little ideas on the nature of these bombs, or whether more were out there, Stillman exercised caution and decided to inspect it himself, asking Raiden and Pliskin to finish disarming the smaller bombs in shells 1 and 2. Raiden and Pliskin protested, suspecting that Stillman's prosthetic leg would get him caught on his way from strut C to strut H. Unable to keep the truth hidden further, Stillman finally confessed that he hadn't lost his leg in the explosion from five years ago. He admitted that he had lived a lie since the tragic incident, and explained how he faked being a victim of the incident to shield himself from the guilt, unable to face the families of the real victims. He further declared that he killed his own soul by playing the victim, which had made his life more hellish rather than protecting him. He was resolute on stopping Fat Man, declaring that Fat Man's crimes were also his own, crimes of omission and arrogance, believing it to be the only way to defuse his own sins. Raiden and Pliskin finally yielded and proceeded to defuse the rest of the bombs. Meanwhile, Stillman proceeded to calibrate new bomb sensors that could detect Fat Man's scentless C4s, taking one with him and leaving one behind in the pantry of Strut C just in case. Stillman then made his way to the bottom of Strut H, where he found the vast quantity of sealed C4. After conducting an analysis, Stillman concluded that there would be a similar bomb at the bottom of Strut A. 
While at the bottom of Strut H, he was eventually contacted by Raiden, who reported having disarmed all of the bombs in Shell 1, while Pliskin reported having one more to go. When asked about the big bomb, Stillman informed them that there would be another one at the bottom of Strut A, stating that Fat Man's true intentions were to destroy Struts A and H to compromise a balance that maintains Big Shell's structural integrity and to cause the facility to buckle under its own weight. To stop this, Stillman told Raiden about the enhanced sensors that he had prepared and left in the pantry, which could be used to find the big bomb in Strut A. However, Stillman, needing more time to study the big bomb in Strut H, advised Raiden to refrain from touching the bomb until he was given confirmation. Raiden acknowledged and then proceeded to retrieve the new bomb sensor. Some time later, after further studying the bomb, Stillman was contacted by Raiden, who reported that he had successfully obtained the new sensor. Meanwhile, Pliskin had reached the last strut, only a few minutes away from deactivating his last bomb. When asked about the big bomb again, Stillman noticed that the detonator hadn't been activated yet, but the sensors were live. It was then that he realized the horrible truth. Disabling the smaller bombs scattered throughout shells 1 and 2 was what would activate the big ones. But by the time he realized Pliskin had already frozen his last bomb, it was too late. The detonators in the big bombs were activated and began to count down from 400 seconds. Raiden quickly made his way to the bomb in strut A, while Peter Stillman attempted to deactivate the one in strut H. However, with time running out and having no idea that Fat Man had placed a proximity sensor with a 7-foot range, Stillman approached the bomb and triggered a trap that sped up his bomb's timer. Knowing his fate was sealed, Stillman called Raiden and Pliskin to explain the situation. He admitted that Fat Man had surpassed him, employing techniques like the multi-bomb booby trap and the proximity sensor, which Stillman had never taught him. With only 30 seconds left on his timer, Stillman warned Pliskin to get away from Strut H and warned Raiden to use the coolant spray from as far away as possible to ensure that the proximity timer in Strut A's bomb wouldn't be triggered. Raiden began to doubt his ability to succeed, but Peter Stillman adamantly expressed that he believed in Raiden's abilities. Then the bomb detonated. On April 29th, 2009, Peter Stillman died at the hands of his own pupil, Fatman. His corpse would later be found by Raiden in the first floor basement of the flooded Shell 2 core. Unbeknownst to Peter Stillman, his appearance during the Big Shell incident had been orchestrated by the Patriots. He had simply been a means for the Patriots to hire Fatman and coax him into acting as an examiner to test Raiden's progress during the S3 plan experiment which Fat Man only agreed to after the presence of his mentor had been arranged. In the end, Peter Stillman died as a puppet of the Patriots and as one of many pieces of the S3 plan. Character Profile Peter Stillman Concluded Patriots Archive Logging Off Thank mm -hmm. you.